Hey guys, what's up? Darcy here at Six Strings Nine Lives, back for a CD vinyl update. Uh, smack dab in the middle of another winter storm here um, in Canada where I live. Um, heavy, slushy snow turning to ice uh, actually brought down some power lines, so uh, half of the city is without power. Fortunately, I have power here, so I thought I would uh, make the best out of it, crank some creator and maybe create my own perfect storm right here in my music room. But uh, got a few things to show you here. Some some of these uh, pickups I've had for a while. Some are fairly new, so we'll, we'll go through those here. But before we get rolling, if there's any um, Raven fans out there, uh, I'm a huge fan of the band, but there is um, going to be some reissues on vinyl coming out for their first three albums on Culture Factory. That's the company that's releasing them. Um, I had seen the pre-order for All For One, which is their third album, come up probably a good six, seven weeks ago. And I did pre-order that one and I thought it would be cool if they, you know, released all three of their first albums. And um, lo and behold, I was on my computer the other day and sure enough, they are gonna release their first album, Rock Until You Drop, and their second album, Wiped Out. So I'll kind of show you, I'll just show you my CD versions of what's coming out on vinyl, but it looks like Culture Factory does a great job. Um, just uh, looks like they're very faithful reissues. They even have a cool OB strip on them. Um, so All For One is coming out first. So that's their third album. This one is coming out in June, June 18th on red smoked vinyl. <coughs> and then in um, July, July 29th, their first album, Rock Until You Drop is coming out on, um, I wrote it down, purple smoked vinyl. And then finally in August. So it looks like one a month for their first three albums. August 26th. Their second album, Wiped Out, is coming out on Blue Smoke vinyl. So I pre-ordered all three of those. Um, some of Raven's best material, um, you know, especially that All For One. What a great album. And uh, just, uh, yeah, if, you're, if you haven't checked out any Raven or early Raven or any Raven period, go check them out. But let's get started on this update. Um, speaking of reissues which, you know, I'm a big fan of, of reissues. When I saw these come up about probably six, seven weeks ago, also on Metal Blade, super excited. This band and the next band I'm gonna show you are two bands that I followed from their first album right till, right till today. So I picked up the three latest reissues of, uh, from Armored Saint for their first three albums. This is the first one. This is a 1984. Um, release called March of the Saint. Uh, if you've watched my channel, you've seen some Armored Saint. I've done an Armored Saint ranking, but great job by Metal Blade. This is less glossy than the original, but the, the artwork and stuff, it's not pixelated, nothing like that. It is just super nice. And actually, I like this matte finish. And there's the back cover, which is, uh, again, faithful to the original. It's got on here the Metal Blade logo, and then in this corner you have the Capital and the Chrysalis logo there. So these ones I ordered from, um, there's there's a few um, uh, places that dis or you can pick up Metal Blade stuff. Um, Indie Merch, Eyesore, and this one, King's Road. <clears throat> I decided to go with this one because there were some of the coolest colors and uh, the most limited, which not a big concern, but the colors were awfully cool. So the first March of the Saint comes on a pastel blue, limited to 200. These versions are number 168 of 200. And let's show you that vinyl and then we'll show you the inner. So yeah, great job by Metal Blade with their, their nice anti-static sleeves, always uh, a nice touch. And here is that pastel blue. Got some black fleck in it, but uh, um, you know what? And if, you, if you're not familiar with Armored Saint, kind of a band, hard to pinpoint. They're not, they were never, you know, glam or hard rock. They were never thrash. They're just, they're just metal. Um, <clears throat> that's how I can best describe them. Uh, even the stuff they wore in those first, um, you know, first few years, which I'll show you some photos here. Um, Little surprise, there was no poster in these. I think you know, probably just trying to keep the cost down. And there is no download card because usually I'll just give those away. So sorry, those aren't available, but 
here is the inner um, and it opens up into it's a four page inner and there's those kind of uh, outfits they were wearing at the time that I was telling you about but if you never heard this album uh, I, I really enjoy this album one of my favorites from Armored Saint March of the Saint lead off track uh, first song I ever heard from them back in the day on Canada's Much Music was Can You Deliver uh, just yeah Stricken by Fate False Alarm and here is a, kind of the live shot they're sitting on some Hondas as we call those here, uh, crotch rockets, quite fast bikes. And uh, what's cool is they have a write-up from each current band member. So they even have Jeff Duncan. So Jeff's been in the band for ever since, you know, uh, shortly after Dave had passed away, Dave Pritchard, may you rest in peace. Um, Jeff's been in the band. So kind of his perspective. And then you have, you know, John, Joey, Gonzo, uh, Phil, <clears throat> little write-up you know regarding that album so there's that one and then here is their 1985 release delirious nomad uh, i always i always say that's billy idol's brother but uh probably isn't but there is a uh, and always kind of a weird cover too but here's the back cover again less glossy nice matte finish um i i'm a big fan of metal blade i always think they do they're one of my my favorite labels period and when they do reissues they seem to do them really well and this one came on a orange red brown marbled vinyl so that is number 39 there's the hype sticker and oh yeah i forgot to show you that on the first one but uh metal blade of course you know it's 2022 they're um celebrating 40 years which these guys did include a couple stickers for me too um, there's Metal Blade, 1982, Los Angeles, and then the Metal Will Never Die, Metal Classic Axe logo. <coughs> nice to include a couple stickers. And this vinyl is a, what did we say it was? Orange, red, brown, marbled vinyl. Um, these are 140 gram. I, I, I like, I don't, I'm not always a big fan of this 180 shit uh, heavy vinyl that punches holes into things and razor sharp on the corners. This is this is just fine by me right here. So you got that cool uh, marble marbling with the black marbling in there too. And uh, let me show you this album. Uh, that first album was actually produced by Michael James Jackson. So um, one of the albums that I always know he produces one of my favorite Kiss albums, which is Creatures of the Night. So and on this album, Delirious Nomad, they used another famous producer, uh, Max Norman. <clears throat> so this one they did, most of it was recorded as a four piece. This is when Phil had left the band. He's, he's since rejoined years and years ago, but, um, and the late great uh, Dave Pritchard, as I was telling you, and you know some of these guys, you, you know John Bush from his Anthrax days, uh, Joey Vera, also a part of, um, Fate's Warning. He's the current touring bass player for the uh, Merciful Fate reunion tour, whatever they're doing. And uh, yeah, let's uh, open this up so you can have a look. So there's the back that we showed you. And there looks like, um, you know, kind of the reverse or the, uh, the picture of where the guy's looking out the window on the front cover. Not full lyrics on here, but if you haven't checked out this album, there's tons of great tracks on here. Long Before I Die, The Laugh, great song, um, You're Never Alone, released, solid album. These first three Armored Saint are kind of must-haves if you're uh, if you're an Armored Saint fan. And, and the next one to come, which uh, uh, if you've watched any of my videos, you know how I feel about their fourth album, Symbol of Salvation. Uh, here's the last one. And I, I don't know if I mentioned it, but part of the reasoning behind some of these or why I went with um, Kings Road is these colors were just phenomenal. And this last one came, came on a uh, vivid violet marble vinyl, number 31 out of 200. So here is their 1987 album and last for Chrys uh, Chrysalis Records. And then they went over to Metal Blade after that. But glad to see that Metal Blade got the rights to reissue these. 
it, it says right on here, first official vinyl reissue remastered for vinyl. It says that on all three hype stickers. And uh, yeah, if you haven't checked out this one, I, I love the artwork of this uh, armored saint uh, character busting through the earth. And uh, it's got little details in here too. It's got somebody's swimming pool and part of somebody's uh, yard. And yeah, very cool. And there's the back cover. Like I mentioned, the four piece, but uh, check out tracks like Raising Fear, the uh, title track, awesome. Uh, not the hugest covers guy, but the cover of Saturday Night Special, a Skinnerd covered, uh, phenomenal. Uh, Isolation, awesome song. Um, Book of Blood, but my favorite track, if you don't check out any track but this one, go check out um, Chemical Euphoria. Uh, just kind of just sums up Armored Saint in the 80s. Uh, very cool great track and let's show you that vinyl and inner show you the inner first and there lyrics on one side band shot of the time right here and oh yeah i like this one too so and as i mentioned on march of the saint um and all three of these have write-ups from the current band members so even jeff duncan which he wasn't a part of these albums. So like, I mean, he was, you know, a few years away from being in this band, but just the impact and uh, um, th those albums had on him as, as, a, as a guitar player. And uh, I think he was in another band called um, Odin at the time. Uh, another band I need to dig more into too. But anyways, let's show you this vivid violet vinyl. It's very cool. And here we go. Let's do that. Uh, did we get that right? Um, yeah, I love this one. It actually looks a little lighter with the light behind it. it um, but if I take it away from the light, it looks uh, even darker, obviously, but it's got some black fleck in it. Really a nice reissue. But again, those are out. I think they're all of, um, sorry, released April 15th. So there, there's quite a few variant, uh, color variant, black, there's black, whatever. They're reissued on CD. So Go get yourself some Armored Saint if you'd like. Next up, excuse me, I don't want to burp on camera, or maybe I will, but anyways, I mentioned before that there's a couple bands, well, Armored Saint being one of them, and another band that I've followed since day one. So pretty much since 1986, I've stuck with this band, and uh, they're they're most famous for their first two releases, Doomsday for the Deceiver and their second release from 88 called No Place for Disgrace. And I can't deny that those are uh, those are thrasher pieces for sure. But I think a lot of fans drop off a bit after that. Maybe not right after that, but slowly. But if you were in the market for some uh, Flotsam and Jetsam albums <clears throat> that are currently very hard, well, not anymore, were very hard to get, long out of print, there's these Japanese reissues. I do have originals for this, but I thought, you know what? Um, their third album, When the Storm Comes Down, uh, the original, very thin sounding. And I thought, let's check out this Japanese reissue and see if it sounds a little more beefed up. And it does. It's a, a little more louder without being too compressed. But I picked up <clears throat> first of three. So this is, um, as I said, Flotsam and Jetsam, their third album from 1990 produced by uh, another famous thrash producer Alex Perielis. We'll remove that little obi strip is always kind of neat. I don't have many Japanese pressing CDs but all of that I do have the the seven or eight sound really good and they all come on this type of uh, just a, a silver plain disc and there is the back cover. So yeah third album um, not my not my favorite from this band. Uh, I think that production did not help this album, but it is a, it's a good thrash album, very uh, reminiscent of the late 80s, early 90s, that kind of thinner production, like, um, you know, maybe like something like State of Euphoria, um, definitely that signature uh, Alex Perielis uh, production, but I, I hope they do a remaster of this one day, and this one and the next two I'm gonna show you are definitely on my vinyl grail, uh, list of, of a reissue. I hope they do. 
I know they've reissued now <clears throat> between what came out yesterday on Record Store Day for Boyevod. They're they're doing those uh, the uh, the three MCA year ones are all getting reissued. So these three are all on MCA. So I'm hoping they will see a reissue soon too. But yeah, Flotsam's third album. And next I picked up their 1992 album, their, their fourth album called Quattro. And the one thing I wanna mention is, um, sorry, my mouth is dry. If you're familiar with uh, the cover of Doomsday for Deceiver with Flotzilla and their latest two albums where Flotzilla is back on, um, the end of chaos and um blood in the water good to see flotzilla back and i think really over the years what do these guys have like 15 16 albums they they miss the boat on a lot of their covers uh, this cover i mean even this is basic but effective i guess but this one is just it's not good it looks like a you know just a their, their logo with quattro and some just a helicopter it looks like a shadow type of uh, black and white picture of a helicopter don't really get get the connection myself but uh, i've known this album love these albums and uh definitely this one and the next one um, this is kind of a transitional album for flotsam um, produced by neil kernan so you know him most famously for some early work of queensreich uh, got that more progress this is where kind of some progressive elements jump into um, mixed with some thrash but mostly it's you know or u.s power metal it's kind of a mixture mixed bag this album but check out some tracks like uh, natural enemy swatting at flies cradle me now great track uh double zero but long out of print hard to get but universal japan is actually are putting out a ton of stuff uh hard to get stuff right now like uh, i saw uh, exodus uh, force of habit is uh, reissued uh, impact is imminent by exodus there was a sacred reich one like one of their older or their their, their newer ones like i don't know maybe their fifth elm or something but and he, here's where flotsam takes a real turn of being even more proggy this is just a and i love this album this is from 1995 called drift uh, you know what this cover i do i get it uh you know i think actually it's a great cover um with uh, you know matching the title <clears throat> so this would be their fifth studio album second last to feature you know the uh, not the original lineup but for the original members but yeah another neil kernan produced album check out uh, empty air pick a window uh, 12 year old with a gun poets tell destructive sign this whole album is solid it's not the thrashy um flotsam that you might know from the first two albums because those for sure those are thrasher pieces there's no doubt about that and then more of um the thrash elements of the newer albums with mixed with the you know just the u.s power metal sometimes like i always say it's just metal but uh, this one's definitely different after that they had uh they lost their their um, deal with MCA. They went over to Metal Blade. They came out with another really decent album called High. I really enjoy that album. But after that, they had three albums that kind of were lackluster, kind of their little bit of their rut. What did we have? Unnatural Selection, My God, and The Cold. The Cold? No, Dreams of Death. Actually, The Cold is a good album. And uh, after that, Ugly Noise. Um, I thought was a good album too. That was kind of a reunion of uh, four fifths of the original um, members. But check out some later Flotsam if you haven't. Um, and if you have and it's not for you, just go back to Doomsday and No Place and um, play those. But last today I have, um, here's another band that I've been um, actually cranking them in the background. Ever since I've got that box set, I picked up the uh, Under the Guillotine box set, which includes the first six creator albums. And uh, I thought, you know what? I am going to someday complete my full creator um, discography on vinyl. Uh, originally, when I was, you know, really, really digging into creator, it was always those 90s albums. You know, they're not, you know, they're industrial sounding, this and that. And I agree to an extent um but i've learned to really get to know 
their their albums like Renewal and then the three I'll show you. There's that 90s period that starts with Renewal. Uh, I did a, a, a creator ranking video if you do want to check it out, but a couple things have changed since then, so I am going to put that on my list to update my creator ranking video probably later in the year after I get to uh, absorb uh, the new album that's coming out June 3rd or 10th, I forget the exact date now, called Hate Uber Alice. Definitely looking forward to that one. One of my uh, albums that I'm most looking forward to this year, but I picked up some more creators. So this is their seventh album called Cause for Conflict on vinyl. I do have these on CD, but I, like I said, I'm going to complete my creator. I'm all in on creator. Let's put it that way. So, so this is still my least favorite creator album. This is probably the most industrial sounding they sounded, if that sounds good to you. Um, anyways, um, you know, that and Renewal, um, just, yeah, kind of industrial sounding for sure. But I thought, you know, I'm still going to pick this one up because I've learned to like these 90s albums. This one, not as much as the other ones I'm going to show you, but this is a gatefold released on Noise BMG. So this wasn't part of that box set. Uh, this also has um, the A and the B side are the actual album. It's a, a double disc set. The C and the D side are bonus material, which I don't really play that much. I just kind of play the main album. A couple inner sleeves here. So I th Frank, Frank uh, I think this was the last album that Frank uh, Blackfire was in the band for. And then Tommy came in on guitars on the next two. So there's one inner. Favorite tracks on this, let me, if I remember, probably um, Men Without God. And um, we'll, we'll check the back. Where's that cover? Didn't even tell you. Oh, yeah, my favorite track on here is actually the last track called Isolation. Uh, Men Without God. Um, what else? Yeah, those, those two are, yeah, mostly, or they are my favorite tracks anyways. And there is the other inner. And this one came on um, with a, came with a hype sticker. It says, uh, colored double vinyl gatefold. Uh, includes some um, sleeve notes from Millie himself. And this is kind of a, matches the cover, a nice blue. So I'm happy to have this for the creator collection. So like I said, I am all in and I will... Uh, continue to uh, pick up more from Creator and, and show you in some future videos. So, and next up, Outcast, which is an album that I originally didn't like as much as I do now. Let's put it that way. So this one is from what? That was 92, 95. This is probably 97. Uh, Outcast, another one of those uh, BMG noise reissues. This one is a two disc set too. Um, again, the uh, C and D side are all extras. So this is the first one to feature uh, Tommy, uh, X Corner guitar player in the band. So he was on this album and the next one I'm gonna show you, but there's some really good tracks on here. Leave This World Behind, uh, Phobia, which they still play live to this day. Uh, Black Sunrise, another one of my favorite songs. And uh, I'll show you the inners quickly. It's not like you're gonna read them, but it's just some lyrics, some photos. Um, and there's in in the gatefold is write-ups, kind of what was happening at the time. And um, there's a, another cool band shot, another uh, cool band shot there too. So, you know, for bands like this, you can, you know, bands that start off super strong or come around years later back to their roots but that middle period you know what I I'm probably just gonna dig deeper into some bands and really uh, you know find out why originally I didn't like them listen to them more because you know I know a lot of us are saying you know what oh geez I, a lot of bands are guilty of making the same album all the time but it's not the case with with creator and I've really like I said I've Really learned to like these albums. This one came on a orange vinyl, and uh, both discs are the same. And then finally, when I saw this one come up for pre-order, I thought um, I'm definitely going to get it because this is one I've actually, and you know, creator fans are 
this one is a, a love hate with most fans but i've honestly not afraid to admit it. i've learned to love this album for what it is it's not the thrashy uh creator that you're that you're used to it's not super fast paced it's kind of got some gothic elements in it but i picked up uh the reissue of Endorama from AFM Records actually picked this one up. So this is, this just came out. Here's the cover. Um, and a lot of people's least favorite, but uh, not my least favorite anymore, that's for sure. Uh, I will make sure my updated ranking reflects where this is. I, I'm not saying this is top shelf, but um, I'm not going to fault them for trying something different. And this one... In the end, for me, once I understood the album, it really worked. So, uh, all remastered, great tracks like Golden Age, Endorama, Shadowland, um, Everlasting Flame would be like, I, I referred to a little bit of the gothy elements, like, a, you know, a Paradise Lost type of song. But yeah, great job by AFM Records, another one of my favorite labels. Nice write up inside explaining what was going on. And you know that after this album, which came out in 99, they refocused and went back to their well refocused of what they wanted to and that was to get back to their roots and they put out violent revolution and they kind of been in the same um you know same track since and uh, looking forward to that new album too let's show you these um some updated artwork so there's that kind of that nun lady on the front cover and here is a very cool uh piece of updated artwork and we got lyrics on this side and the other inner is the same and I thought this was pretty cool too this is kind of a, a lineup of bands they played with so you have Moonspell, Creator, Witchery and Catatonia so quite a mix of the time so this would be you know 97, 98 period no sorry this would be uh, 99, 2000 period and then uh, like I said you know what came next with the uh, violent revolution and these came on black vinyl and one this logo is uh, black on red and then we have the birds um, red on black so very cool double disc with uh, just the original album remastered I know there's a CD version that comes with uh, the remastered version and the original version, if you want to check that, that out on AFM Records too. Uh, I don't think I missed anything. Um, but yeah, just, uh, you know, maybe check out some of those albums that, that you thought were the pure shit. There's tons of bands that have um, tried different things. Some have never recovered. And we, we, we know of one that, to me, has never really recovered. But there are bands that have uh, tried different things um, that aren't so bad that I'm discovering now and then they've got more back to their roots which I enjoy too so anyways I hope you enjoyed that one until next time stay heavy